Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. In the previous video we had a look at the netcode of Black Ops 3 and in the comments of that video I got many requests to perform the same tests in Rainbow Six Siege, where a lot of players seem to have quite a bad experience when playing online. So today we will try to find out how good or bad the netcode in Rainbow Six Siege is and this is only possible because two of my subscribers were so kind to allow me to use their accounts for these tests. But first I have to ask you to watch the Black Ops 3 netcode video, because there I explained what the ping is, why you take damage behind cover, what the tick and update rates of a game are and how I perform these netcode tests. So you will need that information in order to understand what I will show you in this video here. Now let's have a look at the connections that our client establishes when we join a server. The IP that shows the highest traffic is the game server. And when we do some digging, then we find out that this server is part of Windows Azure, which currently has data centers in 22 locations around the world. Sadly, the server does not respond to an ICMP echo request or ping, which means that I cannot tell you the actual ping that I have to that server and if it's the same that the game shows us in the scoreboard, but we will talk about that in a minute. Now, what are all the other IPs that our game client established a connection to? Four of them are Ubisoft servers. One is an Amazon server, the one on top is a Microsoft server and the remaining 9 IPs are from the other players who are connected to the same server as I am. So Rainbow Six Siege does the same thing that Black Ops 3 does. It reveals the IPs of all players which are on the same server. I'm not sure why these connections are there as there is next to no traffic. Maybe they are used for voice over IP but I'm really not sure. In the end it does not really matter what these connections are used for because it's simply a bad idea to reveal the IPs of all players, as that makes it very easy for me to attack those IPs and bring down those players internet connections and prevent them from playing or streaming the game. Now let's get back to the ping value that we see in the scoreboard. When I create a local match then this means that I become the server and the ping for all local players will be less than one millisecond. But when we look at the scoreboard then we see that both players have a ping of 14 milliseconds and not 0 or 1 millisecond. This means that the value that we see here is not just the round trip time of our data. Like in Black Ops 3 it also includes the processing delays of the client or the server or both. It's not a bad idea to have the game include the processing delays, but it can confuse players when they see that their in-game ping is higher in one game than another despite both using servers in the same country. Now how about the update rates of Rainbow Six Siege? How frequently does the client send data to the server and how frequently does the server send data to the client? In other games like Black Ops 3 it's quite easy to tell, because you just need to look at your network traffic. For Rainbow Six Siege I cannot provide you with any numbers because there does not appear to be a fixed rate at which data is sent and received. So let's have a look at the results of the delay tests now. The movement test was a bit tricky because of the animations in Rainbow Six Siege and I also had to use the stance change in my tests because you cannot jump in that game. So when we look at the firing animation delay then we see that 25 milliseconds was the worst measured delay. 15 milliseconds was the lowest measured delay and the most common delay was 20 milliseconds. The reason why I say most common and not average is that I chose to show you the delay that I measured most of the time plus minus a few milliseconds, because that's the delay that the player was actually affected by most of the time. I could also calculate the average delay, but that number would then not be the same as what the player actually had to play with. Running these tests locally was very easy, but on a public server it then got a bit more challenging. Since I couldn't get my players in different teams I had to shoot at my teammate like I also had to in Black Ops 3, which then provided these results. When we now compare these results to those from Black Ops, Counter Strike and Battlefield 4 then we have to keep in mind that 60 milliseconds was the best ping I could get in Rainbow Six Siege. It never put me on a server to which I had a lower ping in the scoreboard. Also these 60 milliseconds include the processing delay of the game, which means that my actual ping was somewhere around 46 milliseconds, but I cannot confirm that as the game server does not respond to an ICMP echo request or ping. If the game would have provided me with a server to which I had an actual ping of 25 milliseconds, then in theory you could remove 18 milliseconds from these values that you see here, which places it between CSGO and Battlefield 4 on a 60Hz server, and that's quite good. The reason why many players still complain about their online experience is once again the lag compensation. 
So when a player with a ping of 300 milliseconds fires at a player who has a low ping, then the low ping player will take damage even though he's clearly behind cover on his monitor. And that is not a good experience. But where other games stop to compensate for lag at some point, Rainbow Six Siege even confirms a hit when the shooter has a ping of 1000 milliseconds or 1 second. Here you can see the shot. Now the other player receives the damage. And now the shooter gets the hit marker. If you think that this is hilarious, then wait for the replay. Now, a player with such a high ping will get kicked from the server after about 20 seconds. So you will not encounter players who have a constant ping of 1 second. However, the problem is that some people have ping spikes. And if their ping goes up to 300 milliseconds or more for just a few seconds, then this is enough to cause an issue as extreme as I just showed you here. Another problem that the game is suffering from is that you can never trust the orientation of the player models. You might think that the player is not looking in your direction, while in fact he looks straight at you. There is something going very wrong here with the update of the player orientation. So Rainbow Six Siege has a very fast netcode that is able to provide the players with very low delays. But the developers really need to come up with a solution that does not reveal the IPs of all players who are on the same server. They also have to fix the issue with the update of the player orientation and they must do something about the lag compensation, because the current situation is just unacceptable, especially because players with more than 150 milliseconds are very common in this game. It's issues like these that harm your community and the longevity of your game, so they really need to be fixed as soon as possible. These test videos are a lot of work and always present interesting challenges, which is why I could only release a few videos during the last few weeks. So I hope that I could show you a few interesting things in this video and if you enjoyed it then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.